Okay, welcome everybody to our Thursday community chat for June 11th. Uh, thank you all for joining us. So um, as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded. So please refrain from asking any personal um, health questions. If you want to um, ask a question, raise your hand by pressing star nine from your phone or um, raising your hand in the Zoom application. So I wanna to welcome today Amherst Leisure Services Director, Barb Bills, um, as well as your Amherst Town Manager, Paul Balkeman. Nice to see you both. Hey, nice to be here. So um, before we launch into um, questions that have been asked, do you have any general updates for our viewers? Um, let's see. Uh, I think, you know, we have been really focused on a number of things in town. One is the budget, and there's so many different, uh, different pieces of the budget that are moving forward. We're looking at a lot of reappointments um, that we're going through because this is a time of year for reappointments. Um, and then um, moving forward, um, we've had a lot of conversations. And one of the reasons why I wanted Barb on the show today was there's so many conversations going on about what's happening during the summer. And that ranges from the um, opening of restaurants downtown to a lot of our recreational things. And that's where we've received a lot of our questions. So that's, that's where we wanna focus our conversation today. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Any general statements or um, kind of information before we launch into questions that you that you want to um, catch folks up on? Uh, as for me, uh, no, I think Paul's pretty much covered it. Uh, we'll we'll go ahead with the questions, and uh, if there's more, we can add to it. How's that? Sounds, Sounds great. Um, so I, I'll, I'll preface some of our questions by you know, what a lot of people have been searching and emailing at least me about. Um, and we'll, we'll touch on some of these with some questions that we have, but you know, puffers, playgrounds, pools, um, all things summer. So um, I guess that this question is for both of you. Can, can you tell us exactly what is open and what's not open as we look into the summer? I can start, Paul, and then yeah. you can uh, fill in the blanks if I miss mm -hmm. something. But sure. basically at this point, what's open is Cherry Hill Golf Course, the Mill River Tennis Courts, all of our playgrounds are open, and all of our public restrooms at the um, parks are gonna be open, if they are not open already. Uh, the outdoor pools are scheduled to open on June 27th. Both outdoor pools, Mill River Recreation Center and War Memorial Pool will be open uh, with a limited schedule this year, which we'll get into later. Uh, but uh, in addition, the waiting pool at Mill River will also be open. So Puffer's Pond is scheduled to open next week uh, and we'll have some restrictive uh, activities with sports programs um, at the various fields, but those will be quite limited to only 10 participants and there will need to be prior approval for anything that's organized. Uh, the pavilions we're looking to open around July 4th. So those are that's sort of the updates in terms of what's coming. Uh, what's closed? Uh, is basically our day camps, our 4th of July uh, celebration, unfortunately, has been canceled. And anything that took pla takes place or was scheduled to take place, I should say, in their indoor facilities. So um, that's just something to keep in mind if uh, you were looking for activities in those areas. Uh, on a positive note, although the basketball courts at Mill River are closed right now. The, the reason they are closed is because they're going to be renovated. So we're going to have really nice basketball courts, um, hopefully ready by the fall. And uh, we'll also have, uh, they'll be expanded to include a uh, section for kids to play basketball on, not just the, the two courts for the adult uh, regulation basketball courts. So that's going to be a great addition. So we're looking forward to that. Paul, do you have anything else to add? Did I miss anything? No, I think I think that you nailed it. I think one of the things that we want to emphasize is that we have been aligning our decision making with the state's decision making because we want to be as best as we can uh, aligned with the governor's uh, directives that come out from the um, the state. I think Barb, you know, and and there's an enormous number of them that have come out and they're so detailed and it's 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 sector by sector. And so Barb has done a really terrific job of start trying to align ourselves. And sometimes we can't, you know, the, the, the um, directives are so specific 
and we can't really carry out our programs. But I think all the other things we've been walking in lockstep with the um, with the rest of the state. And that's a that's a good point, Paul, because I, a couple of times I've been asked since we um, announced that the LSSC wouldn't have camps. Um, some people have questioned, well, we thought the governor said that summer camps were okay. So why can't we run ours? Yeah, Paul's right. The, uh, the, the, in relationship to the day camps, uh, what we found out and other recreation departments throughout the state is that the, the restrictions are, are such that it just would really inhibit our ability to run um, quality programming for the kids. Uh, the kids would, uh, wouldn't be able to allow, be allowed to go swimming at the swimming pool, for instance. Um, there wouldn't be any field trips, there wouldn't be any group play, and they'd have to, there would be no shared toys or shared sports equipment. So you're somewhat limited. The other issue was space, where the state was requiring 144 square feet per child, which would mean we could serve a very, very, very few amount of, of children in the program. So we are very sorry. It's one of our strongest programs, a great program, but we'll be back next year better than ever. We do, by the way, we are planning alternative programs to sort of fill that void. So maybe I can just speak a little bit about that. We will be offering a program called Camp in a Bag. And so it's going to be cool with activities for kids uh, that they can do at home. And then they can link on to our, our website and our other social media sites to um, you know, get feedback, instruction, what have you. And um, then we're going to try to do some on-site programming once we get hopefully into phase three at Groff Park when that opens, when the place uh, structures are open there and the, and the spray park. So we'll have a presence there and we're looking forward to that and be, to be able to serve the communities in South Amherst that um, desperately need things for kids to do as they do all over Amherst. That's great. That sounds exciting. My, my little one it was sad about not getting to do her LSSC camps with all her friends this year, but she'll be excited to hear that there is something coming. So thank well, you for sharing that. The staff sends their regards. The, they, they miss the kids so, uh, so much and, and they're going to miss this summer. But we'll, we'll try to reinvent ourselves and evolve and, and provide activities this summer in some other type of form. So one of the things you mentioned, Barb, is your staff. And so you've been a done a tremendous job of reallocating your staff to, you know, if they're not able to do the job as, as they normally are hired to do, say for summer camps, they are still doing the, the camp in a bag stuff, but they, we are also having them work at Cherry Hill, at Puffer's Pond and, and different locations to help offset some of the, the staff that we normally bring on in the summer. Um, so I really appreciate it that you're, you've uh, allocated staff to, to where we've needed it. And that, that's a, uh, an ongoing project as we keep re-push positioning people and other departments have done this too. The, the <laughs> senior center has dedicated one of their employees up to Puffer's Pond because we know that's going to require staffing. You know, I know, I, you know, we're, I know we're working on having an actual presence at, um, at Groff Park for the spray park uh, to help manage it and educate people about what's what's to expect what what they should expect it's not a place that's monitored so you just don't go and drop your kids and then you, it's not uh, daycare but um it is somebody who's going to help if people have concerns about social distancing and things like that there'll be someone there to, to be in a position of authority in essence right exactly so we'll be um uh, when that we're hoping to have that open in mid-july so that's going to be very very exciting, uh, a very exciting addition to the recreational facilities that we have in town. So uh, yeah, we'll have one or two attendants up there, um, or people up there, one maybe providing programming, another moder mo you know, monitoring the social distancing requirements and so forth. Boy, I was up there over the weekend, mm -hmm. and it's big, and it's exciting looking, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you swung by there, Brianna, but you should. It's You go like, wow, this is going to be a real attraction for folks the, the spray park in particular but the entire facility looks really top-notch so kudos to your team for helping to make that happen i think we need to get over there and do a little virtual tour to let people know what's coming mm, to them that's a great idea yeah so maybe you'll see that coming soon um, i just want to remind our attendees feel free to hop in by raising your hand in zoom star nine from the phone or use the q a function if you're in zoom we'd love to hear from you live um, another thing too, and always 
Um, I'm always looking at what people are searching for on our website so that we can make it easier to find. And every year leading up to summer pools is our number, pools and fireworks are our number one and two searches. So um, we know that pools are gonna be reopening. Could you talk a little bit more again, specifically on the date and then um, what that process will look like, what's gonna be different for people this year? Well, we're looking to open um, on our regularly scheduled opening day, which was June 27th. Uh, <clears throat> we seem to have all our staff in place. Uh, I have been meeting regularly with the managers and the coordinator for that program. Uh, so we're ready to, to uh, get it rolling. We've also worked with DPW the, and the health department be, uh, because there are, of course, many, many regulations that are new this year that we'll be implementing. Um, so our schedule tentatively will be at 10 o'clock to um, 7.30 p.m. So 10 to 10 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. on the weekdays and 11 to, to 6 on weekends. Uh, we'll devote three hours of lap swim from 11 to um, from 10 to 1 on weekend uh, week, weekdays and 11 to 1 on weekends. So uh, that's sort of the lap swim time that will be available. And, uh, you know, it will be a very different experience than I, uh, swimmers in the public are, are used, have been used to in past years. You'll need to arrive in your swimsuit. Uh, you'll shower. You won't have access to any of the changing rooms. Those will be blocked off. You will have access to the restrooms, but you'll be required to arrive and leave in your swimsuit. And there won't be a lot of sunbathing time, that kind of thing. And people will be socially distanced on the deck. And so, and we'll have actually dedicate, one of the requirements is that we have a dedicated staff member that their, their role is basically to um, oversee social distancing uh, while we're open. So. A lot, we'll have a lot of that posted. Like I say, we're working with the uh, health inspector, Susan and um, some other, and, and Julie Fetterman, uh, the health director and DPW to implement all the changes, not only that we're making structurally, but just in terms of regulations and so forth. So it will look different, but it will be open. That's the good news. Good news, yeah. Yeah, people were very uh, concerned about that leading up to, to that announcement. And um, if all of those details are not there yet, I'm sure they will be soon, but amherstma.gov slash pools um, is usually where you can find the pool schedule and, and, and requirements and information. So as that gets added, you can use that site to, to find out some of that important information, I would mm -hmm. imagine. Yeah, I'm, I'm anticipating we'll have something completely firmed up by Monday. Oh, good. Great. So um, one of the other things that we've gotten a lot of question on um, is, and you mentioned it briefly um, about Popper's Pond reopening. Uh, people have been asking or hearing that there's gonna be staff there. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that staff will be doing? Are they lifeguarding? Are they charging or what is it gonna look like? Uh, they will not, and, and you can jump in Paul, they won't be lifeguarding at Puffer's Pond, but. I, what it will look again very different. We're going to have parking attendants this year who will basically be at the base of, of State Street on that one way entrance and they'll ask people are you there to fish? Are you there to hike? Are you there to swim? If you're there to fish or hike, go ahead find a parking place keep going. If you're there to swim it's going to be looking a little different. So that individual will have a walkie-talkie. They'll, they'll walk, they'll communicate with someone on the beach who will be a staff member and um, there will be basically designated 25 to 30 spots on the beach which will be marked by numbers we're still working on what that's going to look like and uh, that person then that person in the car will say they'll, the attendant will say okay uh, 25 is spot number 25 is open go ahead and head down and someone will greet you at the entrance. So that's sort of the plan. Then they'll go to their designated spot, maintain their social distancing, and enjoy Puffer's Pond. So nice. that's the plan. We're hoping next week to uh, be able to pull all that off. And that'll be, as Paul um, alluded to earlier, that'll be staffed by uh, town staff that are serving in different functions than they normally would. But um, we're gonna, we'll be there to help you out. 
So that's, I know you had a meeting up there in the rain this morning, right before you came here, uh, Barb, but that's interesting. So you're going to have, have assigned spots. So you have site, sites at 25, like a campground. And so yeah. I assume that this will be something that you'll keep monitoring and adjusting as the, you know, in terms of feedback from the public and, and how it works. And sometimes these things work the way you have it on paper. And sometimes I think our, our, our byword has been, uh, change adjust change you know and just keep tweaking it so we yeah. get it better it's too hard to figure it all out right up front um and get it right you just don't count on it getting it right the right first right. time so that's been our experience at least for this whole crisis definitely this is an evolving uh you know a uh, year for everybody yeah. so uh yeah. yeah we'll we'll evolve as necessary and uh, but we'll we'll uh, We'll set it up initially so that hopefully it's it's a functioning uh, system that works well mm -hmm. for everyone. Mm -hmm. well. Good. And just to clarify, um, this also came up when people heard that there might be staff, additional staff there. Um, is there an admission fee for the use of the the pond because of this um, extra staff? Or no, no, no admission fee. It's just a way to monitor the. Um, COVID-19 social distancing that we're required to put in place. And again, aligned with the governor's um, guidance on this as well. So, so one thing I've gotten, and I don't have a very specific questions on this, but I've gotten a lot of um, hits, people searching for this. Um, and I have a, a very fond place in my heart for this event, which is the Amherst 4th of July and fireworks. That was uh, how I came to working in local government. That was one of the first things I worked on. So. <laughs> Um, and that was, oh gosh, I won't say, say how many years ago, because I don't want to date us, but um, so it's a beloved Amherst event. Um, anything you can walk us through about the decision or, you know, how, how you, um, how you came to decide that that wasn't going to happen um, or just anything about that process? Uh, I can speak, I guess, a little bit to this. Um, obviously, you, uh, the everywhere across the United States, these large events are being discouraged because of the inability to keep people from, you know, uh, properly so socially distancing. And we wouldn't, it's a, you know, it's a public health issue. We would never want to bring that many people together and um, have them ex potentially exposed to the virus uh, in a way that uh, might, might get them sick and, and so forth. So it was a decision reached not only by us, but by UMass in consultation with them and the um, health and safety uh, folks that were are involved in the in the event as well. But we're very sorry. Again, we'll be back bigger than better and better than ever next year, hopefully. Yeah, we hope so. And and I'd love to put it out there to to folks. I mean, obviously, it's an important holiday. If there's any uh, suggestions from the community about how we could still do something virtually or to honor to honor the day then we'd be please send me your suggestions at info at amherstma.gov i also um, heard this morning that the south amherst um celebration is has been postponed by the organizers that's a privately organized celebration which is mm -hmm. so iconic mm -hmm. and uh, it's just sort of sad to see that go by the wayside this year as well yeah that event's been going on for i think over 100 years it's yeah and it's run by fun. It's a private, you know, group. Volunteers, yeah. Volunteers, right. I do have one suggestion, and I'm doing this live so that you guys can't say no. Um, <laughs> I think the department heads in the town of Amherst, we should still do the Atkins Blueberry Pie Eating Contest just on Zoom. Mm. Get everybody in the room. Take bets. So I'm, I'm putting that out there. If you'd like to see that happen, um, folks who are listening, let me know. I'll see I'm glad to do. assign that to different people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to put it to the room again. If you have any questions, we're coming up to our uh, 1230 time shortly. So if you had anything you wanted to say, even just hello, doesn't have to be a question. Um, now's your chance to raise your hand, star nine if you're on the phone. Um, otherwise, are there things that we didn't ask you, Barb, that you wanted to get out there um, that pe people have been asking your staff or things that you wanted to just share with our community? Sure. Uh, I think I would like to share that we've just completed uh, for our department a strategic planning process. So we're really, uh, we've worked with the uh, UMass Donahue Institute, uh, who was our consultant for this project and facilitator. 
and they just did a, did a marvelous job. We have probably about seven different priorities that we've identified for the next three years that we'll be addressing. So look for some changes in our de uh, department. Any, in, I won't go into detail because uh, we'll, be, we'll be unveiling them once the uh, plan is complete, uh, which will probably be sometime in mid-July. So it, it's, it was a great process and um, it will certainly provide us with direction going forward for the, at least the next three years. And we did take into account these last three months as well. So, uh, and what, what kind of impact that had on our department and what we might be doing going forward as well. So that was good. It was a good, uh, good exercise, good experience. Just, uh, just a super group. I got to give my, uh, my props to the, the staff and the commission members uh, who really came together and the public who came mm -hmm. to all the uh, sessions and gave some really, really valuable input and uh, through surveys as well. Um, so just great. Lots of, lots of responses on those surveys, which really helped to guide our decision making through the process. So thank you. And I think uh, you mentioned your commission, and I think there's maybe at least one, if not several vacancies on the LSSE commission. So for those folks who are interested in um, all the things that Leisure Services does uh, through their programming and, and you want to volunteer to serve, we, there are vacancies um, on that commission and we would encourage you to go online and express your interest if that's for you. And you can do that at amherstma.gov slash CAF, which stands for Community Activity Forum. Um, there's other um, vacancies on different boards and committees as well. Yeah, right. LSSC is a fun one though. Yeah. They get to talk about the fun stuff. But and there is one vacancy on that that we're looking for someone who, you know, who's who who uses the LSSC services or have kids who use it. That's 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 where you bring high value, um, because you have that direct experience and you talk to your friends and that you can bring that to the commission meetings and really inform staff and in how we do our jobs better. Absolutely. You might be hearing from me then, Barb. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so I don't see any um, any questions or hands in the room at this point. Um, Paul, do you have any? Um, we've got a few minutes left. Do you have any kind of parting words you want to leave everybody with? Um, let's see. So um, we are, you know, department. Everybody's been working throughout this uh, pandemic, but uh, we are beginning to bring more and more people back into town hall. Um, looking to fully staff up um, with social distancing as best we can. There's some limitations on what, you know, due to the oddball shape of our building and the cramped spaces and stuff, but we're trying to social distance people. So we'll have more and more people in the building working, uh, still not ready to open the building to the public. Um, there, we have a, a strict guideline for anybody, i.e. staff who walk into the building, they have to, they'll be given a card, they'll be recorded in, because if someone does get tested positive for COVID-19, then we want to do strict contract tracing within our building. Uh, and there's one door you can enter. All these, there's lots of details to this that a team has been working on, which is really good. Um, so, but not quite ready to do that because we would have to do the same thing for anybody coming into the building. We've been incredibly successful at meeting the needs um, of the public this way. The other big thing that's happening is just the, the um, uh, the opening of restaurants downtown, which is really exciting. And we're looking to establish some uh, open areas where you can have picnic tables, you can go get takeout. If you don't want to sit down and be served, which we, you will be able to do downtown, you can also just get takeout from any establishment and then sit down at a picnic table that we're putting up in various locations downtown over the next couple of days. So that's, you know, it'll start to have some visible life downtown. So that's, that's I'm really excited about seeing that. It, it, we, Boy, sometimes in you know March it was so desolate because there were just no cars, and now it's really picked up a lot. So it's kind of it's good to see. Our, and our restaurants really need your business. Absolutely. In fact, I think I'm going to go to one after we're done here. Um, <laughs> Sounds good. Do Do you know? Do we know, or can we talk about yet where those locations of the the picnic tables are going to be? Yeah, so we're looking at carving out some space on the Boltwood Garage and uh, some areas on Sweetser Park, and we're looking at Cushman Common as well. Great. Yeah. People, mm -hmm. and, and maybe once they're up, we'll, we'll release that information about exactly where they are and where you can find those. Well, 
Yeah, so it's just we're, we're re redeploying existing picnic tables that we have that we can't have as many picnic tables, say, at Mill River Pavilion. So we're taking some of those out. It just depends how many we actually have. It's, uh, we've got some additional things on order for us to help do this. And sometimes you, we need to create fencing. So if that's not in place, we can't really do it. So there's lots of pieces to this puzzle, but really you know, DPW is moving very quickly on this. Yeah, so more details to come on, the, on those. Yeah. Okay, well, I want to thank you both. I want to thank Barb, especially for joining us. People are asking lots of questions and um, a lot of those programs have a lot to do with your team. And so mm -hmm. we thank you for all your hard work and joining us today. And um, I want to thank everyone who is watching. So uh, we will be back next Thursday at noon, same link, same phone number, new special guest, um, which we probably don't know who that is yet, but we will let you know. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Brianna and, and Paul. Really appreciate yep. being here. Yep. It's fun. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, here. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.